Ever wonder what happens to all of the data that comes back from astronaut experiments on the space station? ISS commentator Lori Meggs at NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center met a man who has the job of keeping the stats on all of that for the human research program, a NASA biostatistician. We talk a lot about all these experiments and all this biological research, but somebody has to kind of keep the stats on all that. Is that yeah. your job? Yeah. So, so what a biostatistician does, um, ideally we like to get involved uh, in the research program as it's just starting to be developed, as the principal investigator team is just starting to pull their ideas together about what kind of experiments they want to run, what their hypotheses are, how they plan to test those hypotheses. Ideally, we would be brought into that, that team early on um, because in addition to the, the statistics and, and an integral part of, of the statistics that will be run at the study's completion um, is the experimental design itself. And often that's when we can really provide the most help. It's, it's ironic that this sort of the, that we think of statistics as the last part of, of, a, of a research study that leads to the final report. Um, but we can be most helpful at the very beginning planning stages of the study where we might be able to sort of help influence what kinds of data they collect, um, what kinds of other data that maybe they hadn't thought of could be important in the interpreting uh, of their results. So we try to think about all of that and experimental design as well to, to plan the very best study that we think uh, can be done. And so we need to make the absolute best out of every piece of data we can get. So. Is it surprising to you how Space Station has evolved now? And I, I guess you're probably busier than ever yeah. um, as, as we're yeah. in full utilization. Yeah, it's incredible, right? Because, you know, we're full utilization now. There's a tremendous amount of research that's going on. I think something, something that a lot of people don't recognize is that, you know, the, the, the astronauts are they, they serve two roles, right? They are research technicians. They're an extension of the principal investigator, but they're also, for the human side of, of the research enterprise, they're the, they're the experimental subjects too. And there are so many studies that are, that are important, and they're all, uh, they're all important and they're all being flown, but there's only so much time that an astronaut can give. Uh, and they participate in as many experiments as they possibly can. But, uh, but their time is really, really valuable. So, so sample sizes, unfortunately, aren't as big as we'd like them to be. There's only a handful of astronauts or cosmonauts flying at any given time. Um, they're up there for a long time. Most of the experiments involve pre-flight and in-flight and post-flight dimensions to them. So it takes years to complete the study. So yeah, we have to be really lean and mean when it comes to, to sample size and, and really crisp, clean experimental designs. Do you want to talk about some of the successes you've seen? I mean, can you sh talk specifically about some things? Yeah, um, you know, we've we've come a long way in the, in the HRP program, even just in the in the period of time that I've been involved with NASA. I think we're getting smarter. You know, we, we, we recognize that there are, in terms of human research, there are some things that we just can't change. We'd love to have a dozen space stations flying around, each with a dozen or more human astronauts that can help us with our research, but the fact is we got one space station with a handful of subjects, so we've gotten really smart about how to use their data. Uh, we do a lot more in terms of standardized measurements, and we try to communicate with all of our investigator teams that, hey, these are things that we collect on astronauts all the time, try to work these in if they're relevant, and we've kind of tried to uh, hone in and fine tune those, but I think that the the other aspect that I'm proud about is that, um, that, that the people like me, like biostatisticians, are involved with the researchers in, in lots of different labs to try to have a, a better sort of team approach so we can all bring our collective expertise in making that research possible. Stuff with, with small n is, is, is a particular struggle that I have, and I can bring some expertise to that that maybe a, a principal investigator in the neuro lab or the cardio lab or the muscle and exercise lab, maybe they don't know uh, that expertise in particular. But when we, when we team up and we work together, I think, I think we have much better uh, outcomes. So yeah, we are learning a lot um, in, in all these different disciplines. It's a slow process, but, uh, but it's very deliberate, it's very planned, and I think it's, you know, we're starting to come up with uh, some, some interesting results. Uh, science is science, right? So there's, there will always be pushing the next boundary, but I do think that uh, the human research program is, is getting answers. 
Um, so it'll take a while before they have all the answers that they need, I think, and we may never actually get all the answers we want, but I think we're chipping away at those really critical questions for, for enabling space flight and space exploration.